Welcome to the Things Academy. Welcome to the exciting world of LoRaWAN, one of the fastest growing IoT standards as of today. So during this online course, we'll learn how this LoRa technology works and how this LoRa standard operates. We're not gonna stick to the theory, no, we're gonna dive into it. And we're actually gonna learn how to manipulate electromagnetic waves to encode information which we can send wirelessly over the air. In addition, we're gonna look at hardware. We're gonna look at devices and gateways. We're gonna open them up to see what's inside. So we're gonna look at the hardware as well as the software. And we're gonna use the sensing capabilities of those sensors to sense our physical surroundings and use that as triggers to send uplinks. And these uplinks end up in our LoRaWAN network server that we're gonna use and eventually they end up in the cloud where they can be processed and visualized. So I'm not doing this all by myself, so we have a great set of experts joining in. So we have one of the co-founders of the Things Network, we have one of the core developers of Arduino, and we have the inventor of LoRa technology joining this course. But beware, I want your full commitment for this course. I want you to listen to the lecture, I want you to engage in the conversation with experts, and I want you to participate in your hands-on workshops. And if you do, I will guarantee you to get a successful career in LoRaWAN. So my name is Lawrence and I'll be your host during this academy. So LoRaWAN, that's the technology that we're gonna dive into. It is mostly known for its long range communication and low power capabilities. And if we look at a LoRaWAN solution, then these are the critical components. So we have end devices, so let me give you a few examples of end devices. For example, I have here a very tiny GPS tracker, which you can attach to your valuable goods and eventually track them wherever you go. And all the data is offloaded via these LoRaWAN networks. But we can also stick to a specific surrounding and we have this tiny home desk sensor from Tectelic and that's able to measure a surroundings within a building and it has temperature, humidity, and it even has a infrared sensor so it can detect movement. So for example, you can add it to a meeting room and see whether it's occupied or not. We have other types of devices like this one from MCF and it's a smart power plug so you can remotely control it, but you can also monitor the, the, the energy consumptions from the devices connected to it. And we even have more industrialized sensors, such as this smart valve from Strega that can be used to remotely control valves. So that's all where we start with, the sensing levels. And eventually the data arrives at gateways. And gateways are the bridge between the physical world and the digital world. So they are able to change the radio waves to a binary signal which can be processed in the cloud. And gateways also come in all forms and shapes. So for example, we have this tiny indoor gateway. It just has a power plug so you can directly uh, put it in a power socket and it all has an embedded antenna and it communicates w using Wi-Fi to the cloud. Another example is this MicroTIC router board, also an indoor gateway. You can you connect it using an Ethernet cable. But you also can also go more for a ro robust solution. So you have these outdoor gateways, for example, this one from Tectelic. So you can connect an Ethernet cable, but you can even use a 4G SIM card to get your data from this device to the cloud. And these types of devices you can mount on very high poles and also really have this long distance range covering multiple kilometers. And eventually that ends up in a LoRaWAN network server. And we're gonna use the thing stack during this course to process your data. And eventually we're gonna use that network server to further send the message to the cloud. And we have several IoT platforms that we're gonna look into and specifically we're gonna look into Datacake. And Datacake is one of the partners, so of course we're not doing this alone. We have the Things Network and the Things Industries as the initiators for this academy. But we have Datacake for the cloud side. We have Semtech bringing in lots of knowledge, so they're one of the leading partners in this, in this industry. 
uh, as they even hold the patent of this LoRa modulation technology. We have Rock Wireless and Balena, so they take up this gateway workshop with Arduino being responsible for the device workshop. And we have TTM Mapper, which is one of the mostly used tools nowadays in our community to measure the, the range between your devices and your gateway. And we have a great set of speakers, which I love to introduce. So we got Johan Stocking, co-founder of the Things Network and CTO of the Things Industries. And he will give you all the fundamental knowledge and theory behind this LoRaWAN technology and the LoRaWAN standard. We have Jose and Mark from Rock Wireless and Balena. They will explain you how to build your gateway. So we start from individual components, we stack them on top of each other, we flash the firmware and eventually set it up and connect it to the Things Network. We have Sebastian Romero from Arduino and he will explain how to set up the Arduino development environment um, to start programming and devices. And eventually the data ends up in the cloud and Simon Kemper is explaining how to process and visualize the data. But before it ends up in the cloud, Nick, Nick McLeod is gonna explain you how to use HTTP, HTTP webhooks and MQTT to get the data from the LoRaWAN network server to your cloud platform. And as I mentioned, JP Myers is gonna give a workshop on range testing and he will explain you um, all the details of range and how to optimize for it. And at the end of the course, we have an interview with Laura's inventor, Olivier Seller. So a few practicalities before we move on. First is make sure to keep an eye on your inbox because I will be sending you daily emails covering all the information on how to prepare for the next day. Also try to join Slack because this will be the platform for some informal conversation and for some last minute announcements and all the instructions on how to join Slack can be found in your email. Finally, all the students who have full access to this, uh, to this summer academy will be assigned to a group and to a mentor. And we are organizing a few breakout sessions throughout this week where you can meet your fellow students in this student group and where you can ask any questions to your mentor. And mentors are experts that are active in this LoRaWAN space and they have a lot of knowledge around the technology. So again, thanks a lot for joining in. I'm very excited to get started and have a great The Things Academy. So welcome at the Things Academy. So I have with me Johan, Johan Stocking. He is the co-founder and tech lead of the Things Network and CTO of the Things Industries. So Johan, you wanna say a few words about yourself and, and what you do? Yeah, sure. So um, my name is Johan. Six years ago, started with Things Network as a technical experiment here in Amsterdam. And that grew to a really big global developer community around LoRaWAN and also um, we now have the Things Industries, which is our company, to uh, make everything sustainable. And what I do is uh, mostly uh, the technical side of the Things Network and the Things Industries. Um, so the uh, product development, technical strategy, architecture, infrastructure, operations, uh, things like that. Yeah. Nice. So I think Laura One has been quite a big part of your life for the past, what is it, since 2015? Yeah. So, so what do you like so much about this technology? Um, what I like is that it really hits a particular part in the IoT uh, technology spectrum um, that was before six years ago um, really small and LoRaWAN basically unlocked that part of LPWAN and the, the part I mean then is uh, connectivity for constrained devices. Um, six years ago, it was already possible to connect, you know, Raspberry Pis, for example, with the internet. Um, also, uh, Bluetooth is already uh, used widely uh, back then. Uh, but both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, weren't suitable for large-scale deployments or for devices that could last for for years on a battery. And uh, what I really liked about LoRaWAN uh, was that it was designed as a protocol really for devices that are constrained and, uh, and are on a battery. So it opened up a whole set of new use cases that we also saw happening uh, in, uh, in the last few years. Um, 
and at the same time it's a standard so it's not dr not run or owned by one particular company um, but there is a really a nice ecosystem around it so an, an ecosystem of um, gateway vendors device makers uh, network service providers and integrators um, all around one particular uh, specification um, so it's also open and that, that is what I really liked about it yeah nice because eventually like the, the product that we have, the network server, it's only one small portion of this whole uh, chain of a, that, that requires a, a, a full solution. Yeah. Yeah. So our goal is really to make it so easy to connect the gateway. And you'll also learn that in the course. Uh, you set up a gateway somewhere, you point it to um, this, the thing stack. And then on the other end, you get your messages in, in a way that you can use your application, can use it. And our job is really to do everything in between. Uh, so that's the, the LoRaWAN server side of things, uh, the routing of the traffic and all the security and things like that. Um, but indeed, it's only one part of, of a whole solution. Uh, so uh, what we do is not specific for any industry or any solution or any use case. Um, that's really up to our developers and uh, community and customers uh, yeah. to, to build. Yeah, yeah. So, so what kind of things you see that, that people or customers are building? Yeah, so there's, there's, there's um, uh, since the beginning, uh, you know, some uh, use cases like um, uh, monitoring fridges if, you know, the temperature is in a, in, in, a, in a right range. And that can be really simple, you know, one fridge with a few sensors. Um, but we see also that that becomes more advanced and that these fridges are, for example, in transport and they need to be monitored in different locations in different countries, for example. Uh, but also agricultural solutions, which started off with um, soil moisture uh, measurements, for example, in vineyards. It was already one of the first use cases using the Things Network, and they are still, uh, that, that has become a really nice professional uh, product and company now. Um, but also in agriculture, where it started off with simple soil moisturing is now um, uh, global deployments, uh, tracking, GPS tracking of, uh, of, of cattle, for example, uh, in, in really remote locations. Um, yeah, that, that is, that's all really cool. Yeah. And also the, the ability to use the same net network for different use cases. So you, you don't only deploy uh, a LoRaWAN network only for uh, parking solutions um, in, a, in a parking garage under a building, but you can use the very same network for... Yeah. Um, monitoring meeting rooms and things like that. So things coming together, um, yeah, that's also really cool to see. Yeah, yeah nice. Yeah, and I think this new technology, because it's, it's only out there for a couple of years, and it's, it's really a new market that we see, and people only start thinking of the kind of the possibilities, what you can do with these types of technologies. Yeah, yeah, and there is also quite a barrier to get started, and you also learn that in this course, is that many things will probably be new, uh, and. Uh, if you are a developer that's co comfortable already with, uh, with web development and working with um, uh, web services, then um, using LoRaWAN is, is quite hard because, you, the, because of the constraints that you have with the devices. They, they sleep most of the time. Um, they can only send very limited uh, amount of payloads. Uh, they don't have a normal internet connection as, as, you, as, you, as you're used to with other services that you may have worked on in the past. Um, and so the barrier is, is quite, it is there, uh, and we are also well aware of that, but you know, this academy and the Things Network as a global community is also there uh, to help you and um, to guide you through that pretty complex process, but it's yeah. definitely worth it. Yeah, yeah nice. Yeah. So before we round off this, this, this interview, do you have any recommendation or advice you want to give the students? Yeah, so even though things are quite complicated um, and it can be quite overwhelming, uh, focus on getting things end-to-end, -end, getting the overview, getting things end-to-end -end working, uh, and then uh, dive deeper into various aspects and topics. Um, so um, uh, you, can, you, know, you can learn a lot about end devices, uh, power consumption, gateways, protocols, security around that. Uh, different deployment models for the network server, different integrations and benefits and, and of that. Um, but that can be quite overwhelming. So I would recommend, you know, focus on learning the fundamentals. Uh, I think there is also a really good session uh, in there as well uh, that focuses really on the lower wind fundamentals in just one hour. Uh, and make sure that you get everything working uh, quite soon uh, before you dive into all the various uh, aspects. Yeah. Nice. Great. So 
get your fundamentals, uh, make sure you understand that, make it fully working from start to end, and only then start more diving into it and, and start optimizing. Yeah. So thanks a lot, Johan. Thanks for sharing these insights. Yeah. And now we actually go to the keynote that you gave, uh, where you're going to cover all the basic understanding, all the basic knowledge of LoRaWAN, um, the standard, <coughs> LoRa technology, and the LoRaWAN standard. Cool. Enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs>